we've got seven upset double digit special options. So these are my double digit upsets. I'm going to throw some money on. Uh, and I say options because again, as I said last week, and I'll continue to say every week, you know, I am no expert handicapper, but these are the games that I, I like to throw money on as a double digit underdog. And over the last several years, I've done really well in this spot over time. And so this is a week I feel pretty good about. Uh, and I'm going to give you the seven games that are part of my upset double digit specials. Uh, Mark is going to pick his favorite, uh, even though I think we know which one that is already. So I'm going to probably ask you to take a second favorite because we've already talked about one of them. Yes. Uh, but seven. So uh, alphabetical order. I like Georgia Tech over Louisville getting 320. I like James Madison over North Carolina getting 320. I like Navy, and I'm probably cheating a little bit here because Navy's a nine and a half point dog. Uh, they're three to one over Memphis. I like New Mexico, 425 over Fresno State. Northwestern, 320 over Washington. We've already talked about San Jose State, 370 over Washington State. And the big one this week, there's always got to be a big one if you can find a big one. Vanderbilt, plus 750 over Missouri. Does, P Does Diego Pavia and Jerry Kill as an assistant, do they have that one big – I know, you know, you looked at the Virginia Tech game, and maybe that's going to end up being their big upset of the year. But do they really have, like, a really big SEC upset in them? I think they do. I think Now, maybe it's going to be at the end of the year when they host LSU because that's a home game. But this might be the only other game that they have a shot as a, as a potential upset. So I'll throw it in there uh, and uh, say why not. Uh, because say, you know what, when you're going with 750 upset deals, uh, you know, chances are you're not going to win it very often, but, uh, if you hit one, it makes everything else, uh, look really good as far as your bankroll is concerned. So as far as those seven, and I'm going to take San Jose State out of there, uh, cause uh, we've already talked about them, but we know how much you like them. So give me another upset out of those six that you like better than the others. Well, this, this is really, really difficult and tricky because of these other six games that you have mentioned here, we can talk and make cases for some of these teams. I don't know if I'm going to go all in on any of them, but the guy that intrigues me the most is, I think, the one that intrigued you the most is Vanderbilt. Oh, uh, really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Uh, you know, Clark Lee's got this team playing some pretty good football right now, and I think Missouri is an overrated commodity. I know they're a top 10 football team. Uh, they kind of caught the college football world by surprise last year. And I think people thought they weren't going to be as good this year as last year, but so, so far they are, but I'm just waiting for the cotter pin to slip on the Missouri Tigers here. It's a Vanderbilt football team that Missouri could quite well play down to their level here. So give me Missouri as that upset special. I mean, Vanderbilt against Missouri is that upset special. Wow. All right. Didn't think that was going to happen, but. Hey, at 750, I like it. By the way, uh, the bye week comes from Missouri after this one, and then they'll take on Texas A&M in their SEC road opener. I do have to quickly ask you, because this is the fourth straight home game for Missouri. Uh, anything out there uh, in the Playbook newsletter, and again, we'll have a link in the description how you, how you can purchase the weekly newsletter, which is basically, uh, you know, it, it's an update every week uh, on uh, – on, on what you see here in the playbook magazine, but even more, uh, there's a lot more because you can't only fit a certain amount of, of, of information in this magazine, but uh, in the newsletter, uh, Mark has the option of uh, spitting out a whole bunch of additional trends. So check out the newsletter. That's a good combo, the magazine and the newsletter. So again, get back to my question is, is when you get this part of the season, when a team has played their first three games or the first four games at home, is there anything in the stats that say once they get to that third straight game or that fourth straight game that there's some slippage there? And I say that because even not looking at the stats, psychologically you would think there would be because at some point it's like, well, we've done this before. Well, we've done this before. You know, and it's like sooner or later that energy of being at home has to go away a little bit. Well, you know, to quote uh, Kramer, not Kramer, but uh, Seinfeld, there is some slippage here uh, okay. in a situation like that. Uh, especially when a football team has won their first three football games. So you're undefeated. You're, uh, all three wins are at home. You're playing in home game, home game number four. You're almost sort of going through the motions because you've already uh, you, you've accomplished a lot. It's gotten you to the top ten, in this case for Missouri. And you can't kind of tend to, like I say, go through the motions here. Double-digit favorites at home in game four who are undefeated are less than 50% against the spread. 
So Missouri is going to have to overcome a lot to overcome numbers like that. And I think this is a Vanderbilt type of football team that uh, can force Missouri to play down to their level. So I think that only enhances the possibility of an upset. Uh, keep in mind, Vanderbilt covered eight straight as SEC road dogs of less than 23 when they come off a straight-up favored loss. They lost a really tough one last week at Georgia State. Uh, they had to come back. They took the lead, and they had the lead with about 20 seconds to go in the game. And Georgia State threw a touchdown pass where the receiver was able to get, get by the defensive back for a touchdown. That was a really tough one for Vandy to take because they had really everything going for them. Um, uh, who knows, you know, again, going into that game, they might've been looking ahead to Missouri, a game. They were a heavy favorite, still looked like they were going to pull it off, but then let it get away from them at the very end. Okay. Now, as far as just quickly, as far as these other upsets, just going to roll by, uh, the reasons why I'm going where I'm going. James Madison, North Carolina, new head coach, Bob Chesney. So far, so good. We know the quarterback isn't there. Um, McLeod, but still, they're still a dangerous team. And they, are tw and they have won 21 of 22 games straight up during the first five games of the season in college football over the last four years plus, that's this year, including the last two years in the FBS. So this isn't just all FCS stuff. So they've done it. But again, this is North Carolina. This is a step up, a major step up of competition. The reason why I think they have a chance is because I think North Carolina is a little bit vulnerable. Max Johnson's out for the year. The backup quarterback is one of these kind of athlete quarterbacks. You know, he's okay, but he's not he's not Johnson. And I, I think there's this – and we've seen North Carolina slip up in these spots every once in a while, every year. And I think maybe this is a, a, a spot where they could slip. Is this the second start for the North Carolina backup quarterback? I believe it is uh, because they had that first game. Unless that first game was, you know, one of those early games, which is possible. Uh, but uh, let's see. It is his third start. Okay, good. Uh, they beat Charlotte in week in week two. They beat an FCS team last week, and now this is his third start. So what we don't want is a team that's playing with a rally around the quarterback type situation here. So he does have two starts under his belt. I think that's beneficial for James Madison because, if nothing else, they have game film on him. So I think it only enhances the play here. Jimmy Mad could be a nice play in this football game as well. All right, and then I want to talk about a Big Ten game, and that is Northwestern and Washington. And what I like about this one is the fact that David Braun, the head coach of Northwestern, has done a remarkable job. He takes over for Pat pa pa Fitzgerald. Everybody, including me, thought that the program was done. And then all of a sudden, what does he do? He goes out there, and he leads Northwestern to an incredible season. They even beat Utah in the bowl game last year. So he's 11-5 and five as a sh straight up as a head coach. 11 and three against the spread. This is their road opener. And look, you can look at their schedule and go, oh, look, you know, they didn't blow out anybody. You know, they struggled to beat Duke and they beat them. Actually, they lost to Duke, uh, but they struggled to beat Miami. And, you know, but that's Northwestern. That's how Northwestern plays football. They're not a very pretty team, but they're very well coached. They're a very smart team, obviously, and they're a very physical team. And now they're taking on a Washington team coming off, yes an apple cup hangover, even though they lost, it's a hangover. I mean, they had an emotionally big game. Now they got to go ahead and play a team Northwestern. I know it's our big 10 opener, but it's Northwestern. So, okay, we're excited, but how much can we be excited after the apple cup game? So because of that, I think this is definitely a game that's primed for a potential upset. I agree. I totally agree. I think this is the, does have the all the makings of an upset when you're talking about uh, checking boxes and so forth and whatnot. I like I like the way you think with your upset specials here because you've got teams that have are, they're motivated, and I also think the opponent are also likely to step down to their level, and I think that's exactly what could happen here in this game as well. Now I got to go to a game that I know that you're not with because you have been all over Louisville as yes. a ACC championship contender along with Clemson, and so far that looks good. But I just, I, you know, as I said before, I really like Georgia Tech of what the, Brent Key has done to this program last year. I, I, I loved what he did. Uh, you know, Haynes King has turned his career around. Uh, they were 11-4 and four against the spread as road dogs. 1-0 in that spot this year. 2-1 and one straight up. 3-0 and oh against the spread in their last three against Louisville as ACC foes. That's all time. Uh, last year, Louisville beat them by five. I believe that was the first game of the season. So that showed you that Georgia Tech was ready to turn the corner, even with that early season loss. 
But Louisville, 15 and four against the spread in the last 19 as a home favorite, including one and oh this year. Here's another key Louisville next week at Notre Dame. So there's a big game coming up for Louisville next week. Georgia Tech, though, we've seen them in his position before with Florida State to start the season. As I said, they've been really good as a dog under Brent Key. And I think this game is going to be a game that's going to go into the fourth quarter. Now, whether or not Georgia Tech has what it takes to put them over the top, I don't know about that. But I think they're a team that is capable because we've seen it before. Well, here's one scary stat, okay, uh, and I do like a Brent Key, okay? He's a really good underdog coach, as you mentioned here. In fact, as a dog of 12 or less, he's a perfect 6-0 to the spread coming into this game. Okay. But you have to acknowledge what happens to Louisville when they put 30 or more points on the scoreboard under Jeff Brom. They are 66-8 and eight against the spread when they score 30 or more points. Now, they're averaging 56 a game here. This Georgia Tech defense is going to be a lot better than anybody else they played thus far this football season here. But realistically, at home, do you feel Louisville has a, the ability to score 30 points in this game? Yes. I, I see keep, this game being in the 30s, yeah. That's what, that is what would keep me out of Georgia Tech then. Yeah. 66 uh, and 8. Yeah, but, you know, that's the thing, like you said. It's a good point. I, I don't think Georgia Tech is in a good position if, it, if it's going to be a right. high-scoring game. All right, uh, Memphis Navy, and again, a part of the reason why I'm 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 adding this as a double digit is just because that it, hey, it might be by kickoff, it's nine and a half, but also because I just like Navy in this one. If you look at it, even though Memphis has beaten Navy five straight, Navy has covered uh, a few games, and they've had some some really competitive games in there. Um, keep this in mind: Memphis is five sixteen and one against the spread versus an opponent off a straight up win, and. Oh, and eight against the spread in that scenario when the game's on the road. Uh, also, they're 0 and nine against the spread off of a straight up ATS win when they take on an opponent with a win percentage of greater than 400. Navy, meanwhile, has covered five straight versus winning AAC teams off of a straight up ATS win. And they have covered seven straight after scoring 35 or more points. Finally, Memphis, 1-12 against the spread on the road when they take on an, an opponent with a win percentage of 6-6-6 or more. And they're coming off the huge program. I mean, you know, they're hoping defining victory against Florida State last week. So Navy sitting there, uh, uh, pr probably the best team we've seen since Ken Kenny New has left. This is probably their best team since then. And I think Navy is going to give him a little bit of a game. Now, whether or not, Fourth quarter comes and Memphis scores a quick couple of touchdowns and says, well, you know, it was tough, but, you know, we're just a better team and we're going to show up when we need to. That could happen, but I'm going to go ahead and roll the dice that maybe Navy can surprise Memphis. Well, you think Memphis might be coming a little bit flat here? I do. I mean, that was a monster win. Like you said, it was a, a school record setting win for them. And all of a sudden they're the front runner in the college football playoff race amongst the group of five teams. And now they're going to go on the road and take on a Navy football team that really, if you take a look at this football program here, they are undefeated, Greg. Okay. And if you take a look at them, they're 12 and six straight up in games when they're undefeated. Now don't tell them that they're going to be the massive underdog in a game like this. It's still Navy. They're going to come and fight like, uh, like all military schools do, but I'm going to bank on the letdown here for Memphis here and grab the points with Navy. Yeah, big step up, no question for Navy. They played FCS team, they played Temple, so that's nothing, of course, uh, to get excited about. Um, but big, big uh, potential hangover here for Memphis that, um, you know, even if you just want to take the points, is something to consider. And then the yeah. last game is, is probably the most obscure, and maybe this is the only one I actually win, because it's always those games that will be played late at night, West Coast, and all those big games we just talked about. And then all of a sudden you look up the next day and you go, hey, I got one of these double digits. Oh, of course, it's New Mexico against Fresno State. But I really like this game for a couple of reasons. Um, and one of them is Brock Mendenhall, obviously the head coach in New Mexico. And they've already had moments. I mean, they gave Arizona a really good game early on in the season, uh, at least early in the game. Um, and then last week, I thought even against Auburn, they were pretty competitive early in the game. But – they get worn down. They're about, those are much bigger competition teams. But Fresno is, you know, they're a quality program. Of course, we know that. But not on that level. 
They're not Arizona. You know, they're not Auburn. So I think that this is a spot that maybe New Mexico can not only hang a little bit, but maybe more. Also, this is very important to keep in mind. In the last four matchups with Fresno State, New Mexico State has got two upsets. They upset Fresno State by 13 and by 22 points, including the 22-point upset win last year against Fresno State. So this is a team uh, also that I think this is important when I mentioned Brock and Mendenhall. You've got a coach that will be going up against Fresno State's interim coach. So this, to me, is a big advantage for New Mexico on the sidelines. They've got a quality head coach with a lot of winning experience against a guy that has not had to face a coach with this much experience, this much winning pedigree. And on top of that, next week, Fresno State will travel to UNLV for a big matchup in the Mountain West Conference. So maybe a little look ahead there as well. I don't know if there's going to be a look ahead here, Greg. Uh, New Mexico beat this team the last time they played, and they're going to bring come in here feeling awfully, awfully upset about that. 17-3-1 to the spread as a record when playing with revenge against opponents off a loss. That's Fresno State coming into this football game. And if you take a look at New Mexico, when they lose a game as an underdog, which they're expected to do, and most underdogs are expected to lose those games, they comply. They're 9-32 and to the spread as a dog when they don't win the football game. I don't want any piece of New Mexico here. I think uh, they, along with New Mexico State, are two teams that are, have to be off your list all season long, and I won't certainly hop on them this week. So if you're contemplating doing a money line plan, then this is the one I would avoid, okay? <laughs> By the way, keep this in mind because I was looking at that revenge thing. Fresno State, like, I, I don't know if this is the exact one, but 15-2 and two against the spread with revenge versus an opponent off a straight-up loss. But one and six against the spread with Mountain West Conference revenge last year. So just keep that in mind. There is a yep. little bit of a revenge factor that happened last year in Mountain West Conference games that did not work out for them, but that was last year. Well, the, the whole thing that kind of throws everything, skews everything out is the fact that Jeff Tedford's no longer yes, here. Exactly. You know, and he's the coach that was there and would have instilled the, the you know, the rah, rah, let's get him back type of a thing in the locker room. So it's probably all mood points, if you will, but it's still New Mexico. And it I is. want no piece of New Mexico. Yeah, until until he until Brocco can show that, hey, I'm back and do like a jury kill at New Mexico State. And look, it was a lot easier for kill because that's the sun. That's that's the uh, conference USA. Unless you tell me Bronco Mendelhall is going to be the quarterback for the Lobos this week. Oh, that might be worse, though. Yeah, we don't yeah, want to see that. Be, huh? 